Oh, hello there. I don't think character select screens get enough credit. Ever since the first one in a fighting game in 1985's Galactic Warriors, they've been a critical part of just about every single one. But I don't see a lot of videos or a lot of discussion about what makes fighting game character select screens good and what makes them bad. And I think that's because on Maslow's hierarchy of fighting game needs, character select screens fall in the middle between something like uh, block buttons and uh, bad anime arena fighters. Once people finally figure out who their characters are, selecting them becomes just about as ingrained into muscle memory as the combos they practice. But fighting game developers put a lot of thought and effort into making these things, and they make a lot of really hard decisions in the process. So I wanted to dig a little deeper and figure out what makes a fighting game character select screen great and not so great. Now do I expect experienced fighting game developers to watch this video and be like, this guy knows what he's doing, I'm gonna copy on him. No. Did I want an excuse to talk about character select screens for the better part of 15 minutes? You bet your ass. The first thing that jumps out to me about character select screens is how a game presents its roster. The vast majority of fighting games opt to do something that looks like this. Every character can be seen in a small portrait, and when they're highlighted by a cursor, the more detailed version of that portrait goes up on whatever side that you are in control of. And that's fine, that's perfectly usable, but for most first time players, character select is where they're introduced to the entire cast for the first time. So give me something to go on when I'm trying to figure out who I want to play. Whether it be their fighting style, like in Virtual Fighter, or a little glimpse into their personality, like in Injustice 2. And if I had my way, every character would beg you to pick them, like in those old WCW wrestling games. Pick me! What's wrong with you? I heard Nash! Nash said don't pick me! Fine, because I can smash Nash! Pick Hogan? Put him to sleep three times! Pick me, you know why? Because everybody's gotta pay the pipe. Any information that creates a connection from player to character can mean the difference between bouncing off of a game after losing two rounds or wanting to come back again and again to play the guy with the baseball cap or the hot girl, the hot guy, or the edgelord, or the one that looks like Lord Farquaad. An easy way to do this is to simply tell us where these characters are from. Street Fighter 2 was my first exposure to fighting games, and I remember the first character that I connected with was Ken. Not because I liked the fact that he was a Shoto or that he had a cooler gi than Ryu, I didn't know any of that at the time. The only reason why I picked Ken was because he was from the good old US of A, just like me. I can imagine that many other players relate to this and select American characters to this day, because in the immortal words of Derek the Black Beast Lewis, That's what they talking about, USA in this home. Now, once someone does choose their fighter, that's really when the rubber meets the road for player retention. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression, so if a newbie accidentally picks a complicated character, they probably won't have a good time while they struggle against controls they aren't used to or a playstyle that they didn't realize they wouldn't like. Even here, character select menus can play a vital role in educating players about the pre-match choices that they make. Some fighting games have assist modes to even out the difficulty of a game's roster. Some games have tried to display special moves and how to do them on the character select screen. But the most common way that developers try to ease players into their games is to have their character select cursors default to a character that will give them the best shot at learning the game. Ryu, Kazuya, Jago, Goku, Thomas and Magnum, Felia, Soul Bad Guy, the thing that all of these characters have in common is that they have a very low skill floor, so they're easy to pick up, but they still have a high enough skill ceiling because the tools they have are usually the building blocks of a great fighting game education, which means that the character grows right alongside a player's experience. Using these characters can give players a grasp on a given game's speed, pacing, and combo structure while serving as a great vector to learn about matchups. But what if you don't feel like playing the Ryu of a game? How does a character select screen tell you who to pick that will give you the best chance of enjoying your playtime the first time? I'll talk more about that in a bit. 
There's a lot of ways for character select screens to catch your attention with strong design sense, smart theming, or something even a bit more out of the box. But most of the time, you remember these character select screens not because of the way they look, but because of their music. The character select theme is usually the standout of a game's entire soundtrack, mainly because it's the music that most players will spend the most time listening to. Every time you want to play a few rounds or change some characters, you're gonna hear the first minute or two of that song. Anytime you hear that music, it should make you ready for the ensuing brawl that's about to happen. And because so many of our memories are tied to sound, when we hear these themes, we're brought right back to the good old days of competing with and against our friends. For instance, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 doesn't have an amazingly well-designed character select screen. The characters on its outer edges are actually really tough to read thanks to the warping of the menu's globe-like structure, especially on a 4x3 CRT monitor. But the music? Well, it's a six second loop. It only features seven words for its lyrics and it isn't really anything you'd ever listen to outside of the context of the game, but this earworm was able to stake a flag into the brains of anyone who's ever played Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to become one of the most memorable pieces of fighting game music in history. And you know, the fact that music is such a big part of what makes for a good character select screen is really useful for those times when you're looking at a bad character select screen for minutes at a time because you can't find or don't remember where the character you want to play is. At least then you have some good music to listen to. It is so important to have a consistent, followable logic that helps you find the characters you're looking for easily. Dragon Ball Fighters separates their heroes from their villains. In Street Fighter 4, characters are separated based off of either the games they debuted in or by Shadowloo affiliation. And Third Strike actually does something really interesting. Player 1 and Player 2 begin on opposite sides of the character select screen, so Capcom plays characters with similar playstyles on opposite sides to match. It's not perfect, but it's smart, intentional design. For a good example of organization on character select, look no further than the Super Smash Bros. series. Smash 64? Now that's a character select menu. Two rows, big, chunky portraits. This screen looks incredible. Every character on this screen is paired up with their series representatives. The Mario characters are all together. The Pokemon are all in one place. Melee takes it a step further by placing all of the clone characters right next to the original. This logic extends all the way to Smash 4 on the Wii U, because even though the number of characters on this screen has grown exponentially, and there are even more franchises to represent, you can be reasonably sure that you can pick out a character that you want to play if you know the video game series they belong to. So with logic this good, there's no reason why Nintendo should want to change things up, right? That would be ridiculous. Shh. Now, I know Nintendo makes some frustrating decisions when it comes to certain aspects of their business, but there was no need to change what they were doing with Smash Bros. character select screens. And before you say to me, well, Stumblebee, Nintendo's previously said that the character select screens organized by order of appearance in the Super Smash Bros. franchise. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. That method of sorting means nothing to anybody. You could have organized this thing so many ways, alphabetically, by series, by how good of a driver they are, and that would have still made more sense than this disorganized mess. And yeah, while there is still technically a difference between clones and Echo Fighters, it can be tough to understand why characters like Link and Young Link, Bowser and Bowser Jr., Samus, Samus, and Samus are so far apart from each other. And in a game with so many customization options, I find it strange that you actually aren't allowed to change any of this for yourself. This is what I'm talking about when I say that these menus need to have a clear, consistent, and followable logic, especially when you have such a large cast. Which brings me to my next point. If your character select screen doesn't look like this, then you are fucking up. Sure, this screen feels disorganized, but if I had my way, every single character select screen on Earth would show every character at once on one single grid. 
there are way too many fighting games out there that either put the characters on one scrolling row or split the screen into two for both player one and player two, or both, which usually results in character select screens that hide or obfuscate characters from view. Not only is this as ugly as sin, but it also means a longer time scrolling through each character instead of actually playing the game. Bad character select design is an unnecessary speed bump that only gets worse as the cast gets bigger. And when we're talking about unnecessary character select menu design, oh baby it's a triple you know we're talking about Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. I remember back when this menu was first revealed, people were hoping that it was simply a placeholder. After all, the director of the game said as much, but this is what we're stuck with. But why is it so bad? Well, even after looking at the number of spaces on this screen, we get a count of 21. Not bad, but can you guess how many characters? 53 characters! This game has 53 characters. That means that at any given point, you're seeing significantly less than half of the entire roster. Blaze Blue, the game's title franchise, has 19 characters by itself. Those characters get slapped on a long, single scrolling bar. There are also five more rows of crossover franchises like Persona 4 Arena and Undernight in Birth, each with their own long scrolling rows. But others like Ruby and whatever this row means have less than seven representatives. That's not terrible, but it still feels like it's poor form to have straight up unused space on a screen like this. Oh, I'm sorry, did, did I say that this screen had six rows of crossovers? I'm sorry, I meant five because the sixth, for some ungodly reason, is the etc bar, which only serves as a means to select a random character or change your controls. Why are these options taking up space on this screen when they can just as easily go right here, right on the color select bar? Why is there even a color select button when that could just happen after you choose your character? At least I can take solace in the fact that this menu's been so poorly received that fans have taken it upon themselves to redesign the character select menu. A lot of them look better than what the game offers already. Look at this. Why is this not the official character select screen? Like, why? Now, I want to look towards the future because the fact of the matter is that when you're looking for these little quality of life design choices, they're just about invisible. I mean, it's just like God said. When you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. With innovations being made every single day in fighting games, like better rollback netcode or amazing new characters that bring new and fascinating ideas to the table, or great new esports initiatives, character selects feel like they are left in the past. There's got to be a new game coming out soon that's got to give, you know, uh, revolutionize character select and really give new games something to strive for. Guilty Gear has had some fugly character select screen designs in the past, like Guilty Gear X, which looks like a graphic designer was about to quit and then threw some portraits on a table and then the director was like, this is it. And while Guilty Gear Strive's character select screen could use another pass, there's just so much going right for it right now. Each character is divvied up into four large buckets that describe their character archetype, from all around, power, speed, and tricky. They get two short blurbs that describe their playstyle and a rating based off of their effectiveness at long, medium, and short range. And with all of the changes to Strive's gameplay that are reportedly designed to simplify the series for those that haven't played Guilty Gear or find it too intimidating to get into, I believe that these character select changes have more value to your average newbie than any changes to air dash mechanics ever could. Without any Guilty Gear experience, you know exactly who you're looking at, their strengths, their weaknesses, and how they play. From all of this, you can generally tell the win conditions for all kinds of matchups, like how a big powerful boy like Potemkin has the best shot against a ranged boy like Axel Rose, only if he's able to get close. 
You can take away every color of Roman cancel under the rainbow, but none of that will matter if the person you're doing that for feels uncomfortable with the character they choose. Strive's character select screen goes a long way in making it easier to find the fun, and I'd love to see these ideas come to fighting games in the future. So the next time you're facing down a character select screen, take a minute to appreciate it. Pick apart what makes it work and see if there's anything that you would have done differently. I'd like to thank Mike Z and Keats for lending me their experience in this topic, and I very much appreciate them taking the time to talk to me. I've been on a bit of a hiatus from the holidays to now, so I'd really appreciate it if you click that hot boy button right there and maybe even give me a follow on Twitter. I'll be back next month with even more video goodness. Until then, I'll see you next time.